Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now both the AMD Ryzen 5 7500F and Intel Core i5 12400F are excellent processors in their own right. Both have 6 cores and 12 threads and both are ideal for lower cost gaming builds. The Ryzen 5 7500F is harder to find than say a 7600 or 7600X but there are some excellent deals out there. The 12400F on the other hand is what I'd call more accessible because of its better availability and DDR4 memory support so there are a wider range of motherboards to choose from. Plus the CPU has been out longer and its price has dropped quite a lot. I've seen a few 7500F and 13400F comparisons, but here in the UK, it seems like where available, the 7500F and 12400F sit closer in price. And as someone who has just made the switch from the Intel chip to the AMD offering, I wanted to talk about my experience in doing so while discussing how the two stack up against each other. Now for the comparative portion of this video, I'm testing at 1080p and I used 6000 megahertz dual channel DDR5, as well as an RTX 4080 Super in order to squeeze as much as I can from both CPUs. This probably isn't representative of what you'd probably build if using either of these CPUs and this is important to note because if you're using a mid-range graphics card, say a 46 DTI or maybe something more entry level, then the difference in gaming scenarios between these two chips is going to be even more negligible. And the same can be said if you're gaming at higher resolutions, save for a few really CPU intensive examples. Now when it comes to productivity or really CPU heavy applications, the 7500F pulls ahead regardless. As someone who likes to create videos, I've noticed Notice that the render time in DaVinci Resolve is quite a bit faster than it is with the i5. The i5 is still snappy, don't get me wrong, but my one minute example video which took 45 seconds to render on the 12400F took just 33 seconds with the 7500F. In the following game results, and despite using a 4080 Super, there were still some instances where the i5 and Ryzen CPUs were really close. Different games will produce different outcomes of course, but let me show you how a few of my favourites ran. The first is Cyberpunk, a game that has some really processor intensive scenes, particularly if the crowd density option is turned right up. Here I was using settings that I normally would with hardware like this, and you'll notice that most if not all of the time, not just in Cyberpunk but across all of today's tested games, the graphics card isn't being utilised all that much. That's what we want in a battle of two CPUs because it means that our processors, while trying their hardest, are the limiting factors. This helps showcase a clearer performance difference between them. In Cyberpunk here, the difference in frame rate was 8 FPS on average, with an 8 FPS difference for the 1% low figure too. The most significant change was with the 0.1% figure, which at 12 FPS higher with the Ryzen shows us that things remained more consistent. Next up I tried Kingdom Come Deliverance. This game can be very system intensive, especially in towns and settlements, and that is certainly clear to see in Ratai where both of the 6 core 12 thread bargains are suffering a little bit. The 12400F did a little better here actually, because although the average and 1% numbers were similar across the board, the higher 0.1% figure represented more consistency with the Intel chip. To be fair, it was far from perfect with both. Starfield up next and again the results were very close, apart from the 0.1% low which this time fell in favour of the Ryzen. Both gaming experiences were pretty smooth though. It'll be areas like this that are more CPU intensive as NPCs fill the streets and settlements. The Witcher 3 fared ever so slightly better with the i5, but to be honest, there wasn't much in it, with similar average and percentile lows across the board. Either chip is going to give you a decent gaming experience. Again, the 4080 Super is just sitting back and relaxing here as our processors get put through their paces in demanding areas of the map. I certainly anticipated bigger differences between these two CPUs, but I guess it depends on the game. And if we were using the i5 with a DDR4 setup, then there might be even more variation. Nice to see the i5 can keep up though in some scenarios as part of a modern PC build. 
Another game where aforementioned differences were noticeable was with Spider-Man. There was a 10 FPS difference on average in favour of the Ryzen, but the 1% low was identical across both. The 0.1% low was higher with the i5, 72 compared to 63. The i5 tends to deliver a more consistent experience, and this isn't just the case here either. The last game tested today is Fortnite, and again the average falls in favour of the Ryzen 5 which delivers over 300 FPS in this CPU dominant game with DX12 mode enabled. The 1% lows were also respectable and so was the 0.1% figure, but they both fell short of the i5's percentile stats. Now all in all both processors are great choices, both can be paired with a low cost motherboard be it H610 or a620 for the Ryzen to form the start of a low cost system. If you want to use a more mid range graphics card or a higher end card to play at higher resolutions then gaming results will probably be even more similar. If content creation is your thing the Ryzen will be superior in programs like DaVinci Resolve and more CPU intensive games will probably get a nice FPS uplift too. That said the i5 12400F is still really good for the money and worth every penny of its ever decreasing price tag. It's also more widely available, at least here in the UK. But what do you think? Which would you buy and why? Let me know in the comments. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one.